Edmonton Eskimos, number 91 at left end, Andre Pineset. Number 75, a defensive tackle, John Mandrich. Number 92, a defensive tackle, James Zachary. Number 95 at right end, Dan Kearns. Number 43 at linebacker, Craig Schaefer. Number 30 at linebacker, Danny Bass. Number 36 at linebacker, Stuart Hill. Number 24 at cornerback, Darrell Hall. Number 17 at defensive halfback, James Bell. Number 15 at safety, Laurent Delorier. Number 28 defensive halfback, Ron Howard. And number five at cornerback, Mark Jackson. Head coach, Jackie Parker, and the rest of the Edmonton Eskimos. And now, the starting offense for the Winnipeg Number 65 at left guard, Nick Bastia. Number 50 at right guard, Mark Moores. Number 62 at left tackle, Richard Nemeth. Number 63 at right tackle, Chris Walby. Number 29 at slot back, Jerome Erdman. Number 71 at slot back, Joe Poplowski. Number 21 at wide receiver, James Murphy. Number 70, wide receiver, Jeff Boyd. Number 39 at running back, Sean Kehoe. Number 38 at running back, Willard Reed. And number two at quarterback, Tom Clemens. Coach Fred Fleck and the rest of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. All right, this crowd is for playoff football action in Winnipeg and we'll be right back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Lauren Woods is the head referee for this afternoon's Western Division semifinal and he'll be helped out today by Chuck Paul, Ross Saunders, Art McAvoy, Larry Rohan and Brian Donnelly. Brilliant sunshine here in Winnipeg this afternoon on a cold day although it's not as cold as uh, we were told it might be, because there isn't a, a great a lot of wind, it certainly helps the situation, Frank. Well, the, the field is in absolutely excellent condition, however. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers staff has not put heat on the field because they found last year underneath the tarpaulin that it tend to freeze the field when they uh, took it off. So it has been covered for the last three or four days and is in excellent condition, as good as you can possibly expect at this time of the year in Winnipeg. Well, these Eskimos defeated the Bombers twice during the regular season. You know, back in July, the Bombers really weren't in top form, and the Eskimos beat them up in Edmonton in a very close ball game, 25-23. But then I guess the story in the second game was the fact Tom Clements, you know, and the Bombers were just kind of on a downer after beating BC twice. They played hard, but they didn't play well. Well, the other thing, of course, Damon Allen took off with the football so many times and so successfully gained 150 yards rushing from that quarterback spot. So obviously the Eskimos at that point in time did not miss Matt Dunnigan, but they definitely will miss his experience somewhat this afternoon. We'll see just how much.
You know, in the many years I've covered football, I don't think I've seen a team experience as many injuries as the Eskimos have in 1985. These are just first-string players they're missing today. Uh, from the offense, you noticed a uh, few, but from the defense, look at that. Two and a, the most recent to go down, along with Murphy, Daly, Thompson, Tony, and Holloman. So believe me, the Eskimos go into this one in very, very tough. Two and a isn't playing. It was just revealed yesterday. He suffered an injury in their regular season finale last weekend in Montreal and the injury to his ankle just never responded to treatment in fact Jack Parker said it just got worse as the week wore on well Dale in addition to that James Zachary who's had just an outstanding last half of 1985 is playing with a broken bone in his foot they're not sure exactly how long he'll last so they're very very thin uh, at defensive line position the Eskimos will get the ball first Chris Woods has it bounced by him at the 10 yard line and he'll step out of bounds at the nine, so the Eskimos will have to start deep in their own zone. A 57-yard kickoff and a return of one. So it's the rookie Damon Allen leading the Eskimo offense to the field. Larry Cowan and Milson Jones, who's also hurting as the starting running backs. Wide receivers, Chris Woods and Brian Kelly at inside Marco Sincar and Steve Howlett. Woods isn't 100% either. So the Eskimos are hurting as we get our first play from scrimmage the nine yard line the Eskimos first and ten lots of time and room for Damon Allen and he finds Steve Howlett for a big gain out across the 35 yard line out to near the 37 Roy Bennett making the tackle and Daryl Patterson the linebacker for the Bombers very slow in getting up. John Sturdivant and got caught on the inside as you take a look at that offensive line of the Edmonton Eskimos and we're talking an awful lot about the injuries the Eskimos have suffered but don't forget they are the only team in the country that have beat these Winnipeg Blue Bombers twice in 1985. The first play from scrimmage a gain of 28 yards it's now first down Eskimos near their 37 yard line. Allen is hit the ball pops out. Ken Haley with the interception, and quickly the Bombers have the first turnover of the ball game. Ken Haley, who had two interceptions during the course of the year, picks off this tip ball. I really didn't see at the line of scrimmage who hit that ball, but a very key turnover early in the ball game just a minute and 15 seconds gone and Winnipeg takes over at the Eskimo 27 yard line and a return of 14 yards Tom Clements being pursued by Andre Pinesett and he drags the quarterback down back at the 29 yard line a loss of a couple of yards big defensive play by Andre Pinesett from that defensive end position trying to throw that quick screen to the outside to the right the Eskimos had that figured out very quickly and Tom Clements had nowhere to go with the football. Clements starting at quarterback and of course Willard Reeves the CFL rushing leader along with Sean Kehoe Joe Poplaski and Jeff Boyd are all stars. What a line up the Bombers throw at you. Clements has this pass batted at the line of scrimmage. I think Danny Bass may have got his hand on it. It'll bring up third down and 12. No deal out at, I was out at practice yesterday when Winnipeg was on the field and I was watching Trevor Kennard kick the football. Of course, he set a new scoring record in the CFL this year, but he was having a lot of difficulty kicking north as he's going to be this time. It's not a big breeze, but when that ball gets up in the air, it's tough to kick against in this cold. 
198 points, a CFL record for Kenner during the regular season. He is wide to the left, single point for the Bombers, and it is 1-0 Winnipeg. As we have some pushing and shoving between John Bond and Stu Hill. 1-0 Bombers lead it. We'll be right back. And the Eskimo coach is expecting big things from Jones. As you look at the linebacking core of the Bombers, Tyrone Jones, of course, uh, all-star. And the secondary for the Bombers, you'll see four of the five are West Division All-Stars. Only rookie Roy Bennett failed to make that West Division All-Star. And he had a great year. He sure did. <laughs> it's second down and a yard and a half to go for the Eskimos. Milson Jones again. He's got the first down. Dale, I talked to Milson Jones just before the ball game asking about that sprained ankle situation. He said he was going to tape it very tightly and hope that he could go somewhere near 100%. He says uh, he put it rather well. He said it's uh, there's no tomorrow. He said I got to just suck it up and do the best I can. Like a lot of these Eskimos have to do today, Al and uh, Wilson Jones. The coaches are looking for him to have a big game. He always gets cranked up to play the Bombers. Winnipeg is his hometown. He's had some big games against him. Sprint draw to Larry Cowan and whoa. Defensively, he is backed up by Daryl Patterson, the linebacker, number 76. You know what's interesting about the Bombers is that three of their four linebackers are new from last year's squad. I'll tell you, and they really feel that that linebacking crew of, of Wes Patterson, Moten, and Jones are the key to that defense. They put the pressure on when they come in on the, on the blitzes, which is quite often, and they also were excellent dropping back. Tyrone Jones is the only returning from last year's Grey Cup championship team at that linebacking core. It is second down and eight for the Eskimos from their 48-yard line. Damon Allen almost picked off by Tyrone Jones, trying to go to Chris Woods, and he was throwing that time into double coverage because Shaw was deep and Tyrone Jones was the short man, and now we have a few words being exchanged over the Eskimo bench. Tempers flaring early here this afternoon <laughs> in Winnipeg. There's not a lot of love lost between these two ball clubs. Ty Jones, the... Defensive candidate and the Shenley Awards for Winnipeg should have had an interception. Really, it was right in his hand. Ron Howard was the player that he was having the dispute with here on the sideline, and then Big Zachary got into it. Stay out of the way, Al. Right. <laughs> Tom Dixon is out there to punt now. The Eskimos and Glenn Steele, Kevin Nealis are the return men for the Bombers. Good punt. Back inside the 20-yard line, and Glenn Steele on the return. 25, 27-yard line. Blake Dermott making the tackle, number 50. Well, you can see that they're using heaters alongside the Winnipeg bench, but you know, Frank, the thing that I have to think about is the fact that you must think these guys are pretty soft. Back in your days, Bud Grant wouldn't allow any heaters in the bench, would he? No heaters, no gloves, no nothing. <laughs> That's Just right, no gloves. <laughs> well, they're breeding the football players softer than when you played, I guess. East Division semifinal this afternoon. Montreal beating Ottawa. As the Bombers go first and 10 from their own 27 yard line. Mandarich, and we have some more pushing and shoving going on. Willard Reeves and a couple of the Eskimos. Now Chris Walby gets into it. <laughs> and we're early in the first quarter. We've had about three incidents now of shots being taken after the play. Well, hopefully they'll cool that down. Get on with the football game. Winnipeg working against this slight breeze coming out of the north here at Winnipeg Stadium, but it's not a big factor. The cold is. Referee Lauren Woods just had a conversation with members of the Eskimo defense, and now we're set to go on second down and seven. The ball at the Winnipeg 31-yard line. Thomas showing quite a bit of motion. Clements in big trouble. Dan Kearns is replacing the injured Tom Tuanay. Picks up a quarterback sack way back at the 14-yard line. A loss of 17 yards. Well, Tommy, for the second time in a row on a broken play, tried to get outside on the left-hand side and was not able to. Kearns with good speed in his sixth year. Starting in the place of the injured Tom Tuane does a good job of tracking down the Winnipeg quarterback, Saxon back to the 13 yard line. Bob Cameron will be hitting this from his own goal line. Short punt by Cameron. Bounces at the 40, 
Treflin watches it roll back towards the Bombers at the 40-yard line, and I think he drew a no-yards call against Winnipeg as he quickly picked up the ball. And they'll have great field position, only a 28-yard kick. Bombers lead 1-0. We'll be back in a moment. Head coach Jackie Parker watches his rookie quarterback go to work now. A short punt by Bob Cameron. No yards call against the Bombers. And the Eskimos are first down at the Winnipeg 27-yard line. David Allen replacing the injured Matt Dunnigan. With that rollout action again. Gets around Tony Norman. Finally, Norman catches him from behind and drags him down at the 23-yard line, a gain of four, and that was the one thing the, the Eskimos needed, or the Bombers wanted to do against Damon Allen, was not only pressure him, but contain him. That time he got outside of them. Well, it's a real problem, you know, as, as a coaching staff in Winnipeg told us yesterday, Dale, it's easier said than done. He's got such a great ability to run with that football. If you try to pressure him too much, he'll take off and beat you. 150 yards he gains against, against the Blue Bombers rushing the football in their last meeting. Bombers may have the league's leading rusher individually, but the Eskimos as a team led the CFL in rushing. Damon Allen on second down. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Tony Norman again, number 55. So that'll bring on the Eskimo field goal unit. I'm Tony sure Norman. the Eskimos a little bit disappointed there. Excellent field position. They scrimmaged at the 27-yard line. Now we'll have to settle... Tom Dixon field goal attempt from about the 30. The sun's a factor here. Dixon's looking right into that sun. It'll be a little trickier. Brad Taylor, the back of quarterback, will hold at the 30-yard line. He knuckles this one, and it goes wide, but deep enough for the Bombers. Scott Flagel to concede a single point. So we're tied at one here in the first quarter with 7.46 remaining as... Both field goal kickers are zero for one. <laughs> well, I think both defenses are very happy to have given up only one point after Edmonton had that excellent field position. And a little earlier in this first quarter, the Bombers got an interception and scrimmage very deep in Eskimo territory and wound up with a missed field goal. One to one, 740 left in the first quarter. Frank, I talked to Tom Dixon before the game. He's working with a different holder today. Uh, of course, Matt Dunnigan's his regular holder. Do you think that could have any effect? Oh, no question about it. Here comes the reverse. Well, Jeff Boyd and Andre Pinesett is there oh. to stop a cold at the 25. A loss of 10. Boy, the Eskimos defensive ball club is really up to date on what Winnipeg is attempting to do. Winnipeg has a net loss of total offense. That time they sacked for about a nine yard loss. Boyd had run the football five times throughout the course of the year on that very same play. The Eskimos were ready. Bombers are minus 26 yards in total offense at this point. The Eskimos offside. Willard Reeves makes the reception in front of Stu Hill at the 34 yard line, which gets nine yards back. It was still be third and 11 depending on the penalty call here. Procedure. Winnipeg number 70. Offside. Edmonton 95. Second down receiver. Well, they'll replay the down. So it's second and 20 from the 25. These teams have seen a lot of each other in postseason play. This is the 33rd playoff game. It's kind of like the rubber match. The first 32 were split. Clements calls the draw play, and Mandrich is there, the nose guard. He was playing the tackle position in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, you talk about how many teams, at times, these teams have faced each other. The first year I was in the Canadian Football League, we played the Eskimos eight times in one year. <laughs> we played them in a preseason game. We played them four times in a regular season, and then two out of three in the Western Final. Eight times in one year against the same team. Got to know them pretty good. Third down, Bombers, and Cameron to punt again. It's blocked. The Eskimos, Dan Kearns, touchdown, Edmonton. Kearns and Danny Bass came up the middle, 
and the Eskimos block the punt and get a touchdown out of it. Boy, if there is one person you have to block, it's the people coming up the middle, and it looked like Danny Bass to me, number 30, who blocked the kick. A big break for the Eskimos as they go ahead in this ball game on a block punt. Touchdown. Dan Kearns picking up the six points. Pat Kantner, one of the up backs, took the outside man, and that left Danny Bass. They come free up the middle and block it, and Kearns gets the touchdown. So Tom Dixon is back out there again for the point after try, and it is good, and the Edmonton Eskimos have moved in front eight to one. Turnovers and the big plays that win football games, and Danny Bass has put the Eskimos ahead with a great effort on that block punt. They lead eight to one. Kearns getting the touchdown, his second touchdown of the season. The kickoff now by the Eskimos, and Kantner on the return. Just barely got back to the 30-yard line, and Craig Schaefer was there to nail him. So Tom Clements and the Winnipeg offense back on the field. They haven't been able to do anything as yet here in the first quarter. That was a nine-yard return by Kantner. We have 5.54 left to play in the opening quarter. You know, you know, the Eskimos are actually playing one import short today, and this uh, is because 2 and a went down. They brought in uh, Frank Balkovic, a Canadian player, to back up the linebackers and play on the special teams. Here's Clements on first and ten. Going for Boyd, coming back to the ball and makes a fine catch in front of Mark Jackson. Tackled immediately, but it almost looked like Boyd came back too close to the ball. Or to the line of scrimmage for Data 12. Well, Dale, I'm a little bit surprised that Winnipeg isn't trying to establish some sort of running game. Of course, they have the number one rusher in Willard Reeves, who in an off year gained over 1,300 yards along the ground. Tommy seems to want to throw the football almost every play. First down out at the 42-yard line. There's Willard Reeves getting back to the line of scrimmage and then diving for a couple of yards over Chris Walby. Second down, about eight yards to go. If you're wondering how the cold is affecting the players, Tom Clement says that the cold doesn't affect the play one little bit. He says that doesn't bother us a bit because we just concentrate a little extra hard. He said what will bother you is the wind. And fortunately, we do not have the wind with us at the Winnipeg Stadium today, and that is unusual in itself. Second down and nine. Frank screen to Jeff Boyd. And he'll lose a yard or two. And we have more pushing and shoving going on. James Bell finally making the tackle. And the Eskimos have just snuffed that play out twice now. I'm a little surprised Winnipeg was not called for illegal motion. Watch Mark Moore as the offensive right guard. He definitely moves before that ball is snapped. See him? Mm -hmm. Should have been a procedure call against Winnipeg, but it doesn't matter. They'll have to kick it away anyway. Eskimo defense reacted quickly. And Cameron into punt. Cameron hangs this one up there. Jeff Treplin has handled it at the 30, gets it back, and is down immediately. Ken Haley and John Bond. No return at all, a 40 yard punt. That's exactly what the Bonners needed. So it's first down Eskimos at their own 29. Fifty remaining. While I have a moment, I'd like to congratulate head coach Kevin Scott and the entire Saskatoon Hilltop organization winning the Canadian Junior Football Final over the Ottawa Sooners yesterday in Ottawa. First down Eskimos near the 29-yard line. Nelson Jones got past Gary Moten and ran into Stan Mikulas at the 30 to the 31 for a gain of two. Oh, but nothing but great things from the Winnipeg coaching staff about Gary Moulton, number 69, the linebacker. They call him as good a linebacker as there is in the Canadian Football League, but that time he didn't come in under control. Second down and eight. Damon Allen wide open as Brian Kelly first down. He took a big hit from 
A very physical safety, Scott Flagel, hangs onto the ball for a gain of 19. Boy, excellent composure by the young quarterback, Damon Allen. Just stood right in that pocket. Had all day to throw the football. Watch this. He just stood there and picked it out. Boy. And a perfect delivery. Receivers in this game are going to be bruised coming across the middle because we have two of the most physical safeties in the league in Lou Delorier and Scott Flagel. Indication of that in that last hit by Flagel on Kelly. First down Eskimos. Milson Jones puts a couple of tackles. The ball popped loose, but they rule the play dead. That's Roy Bennett who came up with the ball. But they'll spot it at the Winnipeg 52-yard line. A gain of six. Good call by the officials. The contact with the ground cannot cause a fumble. Watch him as he goes down. Almost looked like it was coming free before he hit the ground. Anyway, it's second down, and give him a gain of seven on that first first down play, so it's second and three. Okay. The ball did come loose before he hit the ground. Milson Jones again. He got to the 50-yard line and pushed back, so he'll be short of the first down. Patterson in on the tackle, number 76. You know, see, I thought that was a little long for a short yardage offense and defense. It, it was about second and three or three and a half yards. Now you'll see both short yardage teams in there as third and one. With just one and a half minutes left in this first quarter. There's Matt Dunnigan, the injured Eskimo quarterback on the sideline, watching Damon Allen on third and one. Allen keeps. He slipped, and I don't think he made it. Oh, he, he didn't get it. He didn't get the footing he needed. The Bombers take over at the 50-yard line. Excellent surge by the defensive front of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and as you saw, he did not get the traction, as Dale mentioned, to try and pick up that last yard. A big turnover for Winnipeg at their own 50-yard line. John Gregory now as the Bombers go first and ten at their own 50-yard line. Clements finds Sean Kehoe. Danny Bass and Craig Schaefer wrap him up at midfield. The gain is going to be about six and a half yards as they mark it at the Eskimo 53 and a half is forward point of progress. Earlier today, Montreal defeated Ottawa, so in the Eastern Division Final, which you'll see on CTV next weekend, it's Montreal at Hamilton. The winner going to the Grey Cup at the Big O in Montreal two weeks from today. Second down and four. Clemens with good time puts it up deep for Jeff Boyd. Mark Jackson knocked it away, and we'll have an interference call here. Mark Jackson going to be called for the infraction. And up until that point, Dale, what a great job the Eskimo defense has done against this Winnipeg offense. Defensive forward pass interference. Edmonton number five, first and ten. Mark Jackson can't figure out why he got called for interference. Uh, I was wondering myself. He turned and played the ball. I didn't think he interfered with uh, Jeff Boyd all that much. Watch, he turns here and knocks the ball down. Interference is the call. First down Winnipeg at the Edmonton 23. And it's to Murphy. That's a tough catch because Murphy broke off that pattern and then ran into the sunlight and was looking right back into that sun. Made the catch, and Daryl Hall forced him out of bounds. And that's the last play of the first quarter, I do believe. Time has run out on the scoreboard clock. The referee has not indicated just yet. Now, Lauren Woods gives the signal that the first quarter is indeed over. It's 8 1 for the Eskimos. The Bombers threatening. We'll be back in the second quarter in a moment. And 10 at the Eskimo 12 yard line. We get the second quarter underway. Goal line touchdown, James Murphy. Tommy finally got on track. He made it look easy. Second straight completion to James Murphy. Just a little quick 
post pattern in front of Darrell Hall, number 24. 12 yard score. Trevor Kennard now looking to tie this ball game up. 50 yard scoring drive helped out immensely by an interference call against the Eskimos' Mark Jansen. Trevor Kennard converts it, and we are tied at eight with 14.42 left in the second quarter. Crowd of about 30,000 on hand here this afternoon in Winnipeg. We'll take another look at the touchdown throw by Clements to Murphy. No question who he was looking for. That's Isolated man-on-man -man coverage, and he beats Hall to the inside. Lou Deloria moving over there, put a hit on Hall. Well, really, the key play in that drive was a defensive play, not an offensive play. The Bombers coming up big on third and one as quarterback Damon Allen could not get the traction he needed to pick up that one yard on a quarterback sneak. Winnipeg took over at the 50-yard line. Of course, the winner of this game gets to go to the Dome in Vancouver next week to meet the Lions in the Western Division final. And a note from Josh Keller of the BC Lions that as of late Friday afternoon, in the neighborhood of 52,000 tickets had already been sold for the game, so roughly about 8,000 tickets still available for that Western Division final. Chris Woods mishandles the kickoff. He's back inside the five-yard line. Woods fumbles it again. But the Eskimos, I do believe, got it back. Mandarich was in the vicinity, and he may have come up with the football. Woods having all kinds of trouble on that one. Several, several guys trying to be officials on the play, but they were wearing blue jerseys. <laughs> I don't think it worked. Edmonton will take over at their own 12-yard line. Second time in a row now that Edmonton has had to scrimmage deep in their own territory after a kickoff. There you see Mandarich underneath that pile. He got the ball back for the Eskimos. First down. The ball at their own 12-yard line. The youngster, Damon Allen, out of Cal State Fullerton, a 22-year-old rookie. Placing Western Division All-Star quarterback Matt Dunnigan. Allen pulls it down. Will take off himself. Dives across the 20. He'll be close to first down yardage. Well, I'll tell you, these first quarter Chevy stats were helped an awful lot as far as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were concerned in the latter stages of that quarter. But still, they had a net loss of 22 yards. First play of the second quarter, though, they've tied this ball game at eight. Damon Allen picking up close to nine yards on first down. The Eskimos second and a long one. Penalty markers. The ball's loose. They bombers say they've got it. Two flags right at the line of scrimmage. Procedure call against the Eskimos. Well, apparently they did retain possession of the football. Well, that's the important thing. Hand off to Wilson Jones. He just mishandled right at the beginning of the play. See that football coming loose. Very, very cold down at field level, as you see Jack Parker. What a great job Jack has done with these Eskimos. So many, many changes he's had to make by necessity during the course of the year. Brought in some great football players of the Eskimos in the last half of the season, not the least of which Craig Schaefer. What an outstanding linebacker he's turned out to be. And the one guy that isn't playing that they sorely miss is Gary Thompson. Procedure call. Edmonton 63. Second down repeated. Check Poche, the left offensive tackle. Guilty of the infraction. So it's second down and six for the Eskimos. Ball at the 16 yard line. Pressure on Allen and he goes down the ball. Is loose. The Bombers got it. No touchdown. There is not a touchdown. The ball is down. Damon Allen was sacked. Well, we talked about Gary Moulton and what the style of linebacker is. Take a look at him. Right there, he makes an inside move and gets right in on the young Edmonton quarterback. Makes a move inside Heck Poche, 63, and sacks Allen right at about the nine-yard line. Harold Patterson picks it up, goes into the end zone, but the referee ruled the play dead at the nine-yard line. So the Eskimos will have to 
of the way. Tom Dixon standing in the end zone. Glenn Steele is the only man back. Bombers with 11 men up at the line of scrimmage. They'd like to return the favor. The Eskimos blocked one in the first quarter for a touchdown. Short kick. 40 yard line. Glenn Steele has it. Penalty marker is down. I think the Eskimos will be called for no yards. While 47 remaining in the second quarter. 34 yard punt and a return of six. Late Sunday afternoon ball game here in Winnipeg. We're tied at eight. Winnipeg was penalized for clipping on that punt return. So the ball is moved back to the 54 yard line and Clemens hits Joe Poplowski, driven out of bounds by Ron Howard. Out at the 38. So the gain is 16 yards for Winnipeg. At that co last commercial break, Fred Fleming, our ISO director, said, You know, they haven't thrown the ball to Joe Poplowski yet. The West Canada is the outstanding Canadian in the country. Does a little push off of Ron Howard starting his first game for the Eskimos in that defensive backfield. First down. Clemens with the straight drop sets up the screen to Sean Kehoe. The ball is loose. The Bombers, I think, got it back. The Plasky, I think, got it back for Winnipeg. Winnipeg's got it. Cold day in Winnipeg. That ball is doing <laughs> some crazy things. Well, I think Joe Poplowski winds up with the football. Let's take a look. Kehoe does a great job of just going straight up the field, but I think it was Craig Schaefer who pulled that ball loose. Winnipeg very fortunate to keep possession of that ball just inside the Eskimo 20-yard line. Poplowski got it back for the Bombers. First down. Pat Kantner checks in, and Sean Kehoe limps to the sideline. Leonard steps up to get away from Kearns and finds Poplowski, who's dropped immediately by Daryl Hall. Good reaction by Hall. Holds the gain to about three yards. Second down coming up for Winnipeg at the 17-yard line. You know, Dill, I, I'm still surprised after our discussions in the last couple of days with the Winnipeg coaching staff that they are not running the football at all. Willard Reeves has picked up nine yards on three carries, but they've really made no attempt to establish anything on the ground. catches you're ever going to see. Dale, if we see that again, though, you'll see Joe Poplowski wide open right at the goal line. Nobody around him. I thought Tommy had seen him and was throwing the football to I him. Thought. It went right over his head to Boyd. Watch 71. Right there. Nobody near him. Joe was all alone. That brings up third down. The field goal unit is in. Cameron holding at the 29 24 yard line for Trevor Kennard. It is good, and so the Blue Bombers go back in front 11 to 8, and we'll be back in just a moment. First down for the Eskimos to get to Milton Jones, and he is stacked up immediately. James West was in there along with Tony Norman. West, of course, the former Calgary Stampeder. Joined the Bombers in September of this year. Dale, our report from the sideline has a number of players trying to switch shoes to find something to can grasp this turf a little better. It's getting colder and colder here in Winnipeg. This second half of this ball game is going to be very, very frigid. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand that already. <laughs> Damon Allen has to pull it down, and he Back. back at the 34 yard line. And now we have Blake Dermott and Gary Moten talking and pushing with each other. So they had the tarp on this field since about Tuesday, and when they took it off an hour and a half before game time, it was a field in actually very good shape. But as Frank mentioned, with the temperature dropping now and the frost settling on that field, 
Well, the, the, because of the late start, you know, this, this ball game is going to be in shadows very shortly now. Half the field is now there. It's going to get another 5, 10 degrees colder. I, I hope that Al and Bill down at field level don't hear that. <laughs> well, it's going to be uh, dark by about 5.30 as well here in Winnipeg. When Steele moves up quickly and a flag is down, the ball is loose. You look at that last punt by Tom Dixon, mishandled by Glenn Steele. But the Eskimos, Kirk Chapman was called for no yards. The Bombers have it. First down at the Eskimo 47 and a half yard line. Winnipeg leading by three. And the counter play to Willard Reeves. Picks his way to the 40 and then is nailed. At the 40 yard line. Ron Howard, number 28, the newcomer in that secondary of the Eskimos. Good job by Mark Moore's offensive right guard and big Chris Walby as they both pull to the left-hand side, leading Reeves around that area. The gain is close to seven yards. Watch the big guy, Walby, 275 pounds, number 63, turning upfield. And then Picked Ron off Howard. Danny Bass. Great tackle by Howard, who started 85 at the camp of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. is playing his first game with the Eskimos, although he's been practicing with them for quite some time. And Tom Clements took too long to get the ball in play on second down and four. Uh, down violation. Violation. Winnipeg number two, second down repeated. You know, it's interesting when you ask Cal Murphy about how can you tell if Tom Clements is going to have a good day or not? Maybe you can just explain Cal's answer on that one. Well, Tommy is, you know, he's kind of a streak player. He really is. And if he gets that confidence, it really bubbles. And you can see it just in his step. I mean, as he comes up to over the line of scrimmage or comes up under John Bonk's center, he's kind of bouncing up to the line of scrimmage. It looks like he's got it right now. Murphy. Well, in we can't do much defenders. about that. Nope. So that'll bring up third down. And a catchable football by the... Gentleman has the only touchdown for Winnipeg, a little bit behind him, but he should have had it. it. You know, the compliment that I passed along to Jackie Parker and his staff, they've just done such a tremendous job of replacing the people that needed replacing. Good punt by Cameron. He aims it for the sidelines and he makes Treflin handle it and step right out of bounds at the 13 yard line. Down Eskimos at their own 13 yard line. Bombers lead it 11 to 8. That pass from Damon Allen intended for Nelson Jones just wasn't a very well thrown football. That was the first time really Damon Allen has looked a bit like a rookie quarterback. He kind of forced that throw. He looked extremely sharp the first couple of possessions for the Eskimos. What a great ability to run the football. Maybe a family trait. His, uh, uh, his brother yeah. is not bad at it either. Marcus Allen of course. Lots of pressure, and Allen does a great job of getting the ball to Marco Sincar for a first down out at the 25. Wiley Turner making the tackle. Allen had all kinds of pressure right in his face. Gary Moulton, number 69, who sacked him earlier in this ball game, is right there and put him down, but a great throw at a very appropriate time. Edmonton needed that first down to get out from their own end of the field. It's a first down at their 25. Wiley Turner, who made the tackle, is hurting, but he's still out there playing that right defensive halfback spot. First down and 10 Eskimos. And Kelly has it. He goes out of bounds at the 53 of Winnipeg. First down, Edmonton. What a great job by Brian Kelly, not just catching the football, but being well aware of that sideline and coming down in bounds. Watch this. Good throw by the young quarterback as well as he put the ball up and let Brian run underneath it. Watch Kelly, and he knows exactly what part of the field he's on. Great job. 32-yard gain. First down, Edmonton. The ball is a bomber, 53. The give to Larry Cowan. 50-yard line. Down to about the 49 for a gain of four. West in on the tackle. 
Collins also had 44 receptions on the year. Both Collins and Jones have done a good job coming out of that backfield as pass receivers. 530 remains now in this first half. Winnipeg leads by three. Second down and six. They reverse to Chris Wood. The Bombers got a lot of people over here. Chris Woods will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Wiley Turner. Well, Tyrone Jones is not going to get credited for a tackle here, but watch the job he does of forcing this play deep. He's number 35. Both teams have tried that reverse now, and both defenses have been ready for I it. I think they'll put it back in the book <laughs> and leave it there. Woods. Slowly making his way across the field now. Tom Dixon out there to punt once more. Kevin Nealis and Glenn Steele are the return men back at the Bomber 10-yard line. Now we're set. by Dixon. Nealis on the return gets to the 20 yard line. Trump travels 34 yards and on the full CTV network. Great Cup in Montreal. Clements goes down back at the 18 yard line for a loss of a couple. There's nobody open and James Zachary who's playing while injured gets the sack on the play. He had eight during the regular season but he has a painful toe injury and they were worried that he might not be able to play 60 minutes today, and, and in the event that should happen, they would move Kearns to the tackle spot and move Stu Hill to defensive end and put Larry Ruck in at linebacker. But that's in the event James Zachary is unable to continue for the rest of the game. Right now he's in there. He's got a sack. It's second down and 11 for the Bombers. Down the middle. Murphy goes high to make the catch for first down. They had a couple receivers well, <laughs> in the area. Joe Pavlosky was the other one, Dale. Obviously, that pattern wasn't called that way. A 21-yard gain again by number 21. The key receiver in this football game so far for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, of course, the winner here will go to BC Place to play the BC Lions next weekend for the Western Championship. And we should pass along our congratulations to those Lions. What a super year they had. 13 and 3. Clemens looking for Sean Kehoe. He's got it at the 45-yard line. A gain of six yards. Mark Jackson providing the coverage and making sure Kehoe wasn't going anywhere with it after he caught it. Second down and four coming up. Short yardage team's coming in now as Winnipeg has second three and a half or so. It's a little unusual. They start the short yardage off that's <laughs> from fairly far back. This is almost a passing down in some games. Chris Walby lines up in the backfield. We got to go. We're going to see the bomber Chris. version of the... There it is. Yeah, they certainly did. Chris Walby leading the blocking, and the score is Winnipeg 11, Edmonton 8. We'll be back in a moment. End over end kick this time by Cameron. Trefflin inside the 20. And that's where he'll be stopped. John Bunk downfield very quickly. Leading the way for the Bombers. 44 yard punt, one yard return. First down for the Eskimos. The ball at their own 20 yard line. Allen quickly into the middle to Steve Howlett and threw that one into the dirt. Second down and 10 coming up. Well, just 2.23 remaining in this first half. Rather important for the Eskimos to pick up at least a first down or two to get this ball onto their own end of the field. Uh, with Damon Allen out of California, Cal State Fullerton, I wonder if he has ever played in this kind of temperature before. <laughs> I'm sure he hasn't. Stepping up. Allen is intercepted. 
by Gary Moten. No, it's going to be an incomplete pass. A diving attempt by Gary Moten, and I thought he came down with it. And the ball came loose. The Bombers are furious. It's not an interception. Let's have a look at it. Well, let's take a look. What a great effort by Gary Moten, number 69, the linebacker we've talked about. That was hard to tell from that point of view. It did look like an interception from did. behind him. He may well have trapped the football. The official in a much better position to call that, obviously, than we were. The Eskimos will have to kick it away now. There's still 2.15 remaining in this second quarter. Gary Moten, one of three new linebackers in that Winnipeg defense, along with Daryl Patterson, James West, and the returning, of course, Tyrone Jones. That's in comparison to last year's Grey Cup championship team. This is Scott Flagle on the return. Bounces off Rod Connup, and then is stopped at about the 52-yard line by two or three Eskimos. Lawrence Delorier was one of them. So the Bombers take over in Eskimo territory following a 44-yard punt and a 12-yard return as Scott Flagle was back there that time as one of the return men along with Glenn Steele and Kevin Nealis. So we have just over two minutes remaining in the second quarter and the Bombers in great field position to start this drive at the Eskimo 52 yard line. Both these teams had seven game winning streaks during the regular season. Lots of time for Clements and wide open is Jeff Boyd. Dropped down by Craig Schaefer at the 30 yard line. A big first down, well, a gain of 22. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's an example of an experienced quarterback. Tommy Clements was trying to screen out to the right side. The Eskimo defense saw it, bottled it up. He finally just turned around and found a receiver downfield. Boyd picks up a first down at the 30-yard line of the Eskimos. 155 remains now in this first half. It's 11-8 ball game in favor of the Bombers. that football down at the last moment. Murphy just on a kind of a breakout and up. The ball not thrown really that well by Clements. Big number 24, Daryl Hall, who was beaten by Murphy for the first score for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Big defensive play. Second and 10 now, 117 remains. Winnipeg's got to get this ball off. Only five seconds showing on the clock. Snap off with two seconds left. The ball's batted and picked off by James Zachary. It was knocked up in the air at the line of scrimmage, and Zachary still on his feet. James Zachary with toe injury at all takes it out to the 52-yard <laughs> line. <laughs> Joe Pavosti jumped on him about the 40-yard line and rode for another 12 yards. 37-yard <laughs> return by James Zachary. Absolutely impossible to tell who knocked that ball at the line of scrimmage, but no question of who has it now. Watch number 92. Could move him into that fullback spot. First down for the Eskimos on the interception by James Zachary. The ball at their own 52-yard line. Larry Cowan, and he has a couple. Take another look at James Zachary, the man who turned the ball over for the Eskimos. Good job by Harold Patterson, 76, the linebacker there. The gain is only two yards. Second and eight now. 47 seconds remain in this first half. I think the Eskimos got it back. Rod Connup, I think, got it back for Edmonton. 
Dan Mekawas had his hands on it there for a moment or two. Well, there's some cold hands down at field level. No question about that. The Eskimos do retain possession. Nelson Jones knocked it out of Damon Allen's hands initially. Looked like Ty Jones stripped it from his own player. <laughs> Looks to me like they should spend more time working on picking up fumbles, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, is it a little cool down there? Oh, it's really very nice if you want to know the truth, but it's getting cooler, and I'm sure by the time the game's over, it'll be very cold, but it's not bad at all, really. Well, Al is basking on the other side of the field in what wow. little sunshine we still have left here. He's got his sunglasses on. It's just like being down in Florida over where he is. First and 10, Eskimos at their own 43. They started this drive at the 54. Damon Allen trying to go to Marco Sincar. Let him too much. Actually, the ball not thrown far enough. It'll be second down and 10 from the 43 with 28 seconds remaining until the end of the first half. Seven and eight. Bombers leading the Eskimos. And Ed Edmonton is second down and 10. They set up the screen, and Milson Jones hit the turf just as he made the catch. So it'll be third down. Stan Mikawas is there to make contact with him. Dale, right at the top of the halftime, I'll get a quick word from Matt Dunnigan, the injured quarterback star of the Eskimos, who is working on the sideline along with Coach Parker. Matt, of course, for the second straight year, out of action in the semifinal here in Winnipeg. And we have a timeout call. Winnipeg. Right. Winnipeg calls the timeout. It's third down for the Eskimos. 11 yards to go. Tom Dixon punting. Steele is the only man back. The ball kicked back towards the line of scrimmage. Steele has it and is dropped at the 45-yard line. And we have time for one more play. A 29-yard punt and a four-yard return. Nobody there. Jerome Erdman looked to be the intended receiver. We'll have time for one more play here before the first half comes to a conclusion. Tommy Clements had finished second in passing yardage in 1985 to Roy DeWall of the Lions. Clements ended up with 3,697 yards. He was fourth in touchdown passes with 18 and fourth in completions with 257. Passed at a 60.4% completion rate. Last play of the first half here, barring a penalty, and Clemens puts it up deep. Murphy, and it's knocked away by Delorier, who moved over from that safety spot to knock it down. So the Bombers will head to the locker room with a three point lead over the Eskimos, and we're halfway through this sudden death Western Division semifinal. Bombers lead at 11. And we'll get back to the Chevrolet halftime statistics in a moment. It's third quarter now underway, and the Bombers having trouble cracking that ball down. It's loose. Jeff Preflin has got it for the Eskimos. What a way to start the second half. The Eskimos recovering the bubble kickoff. I can't believe Pat Tanner not getting on that football. We talked about the cold hands, the turnovers. The opening kickoff of the second half, and the Eskimos have a first down inside the Winnipeg 10-yard line. Get on the football. Number one rule. Panther trying to pick it up instead of covering it up. And Jeff Shreflin gives the ball to the Eskimos. First and goal from the Bombers' seven-yard line. Great fake by Damon Allen to Larry Cowan. Allen to the one-yard line, and he's dragged down before he can get it into the end zone. Tony Norman flying over there to make the tackle for Winnipeg. It'll be second and goal from the one. Great take that time by Damon Allen to Larry Cowan. Putters on his hip. Hold around. Excellent fake to Larry Cowan. Boy, what a big break for the Eskimos. The opening kickoff here in the third quarter. Winnipeg fumbles at their own seven-yard line. This is second and goal from the one. Damon Allen keeps it himself. Touchdown, Edmonton. 
Will the Eskimos take advantage of the fumbled kickoff and now take the lead in the early moments of the third quarter? Boy, you talk about big plays, a block punt resulting in a touchdown in the first half for the Eskimos. Now Winnipeg hands them the ball, really, at their own seven-yard line to start off this third quarter. Tom Dixon is out there for the conversion attempt out of the hold by Brad Taylor. And the Eskimos lead the Bombers 15 to 11. And we have only played 50 seconds of the third quarter. And we'll be back to Winnipeg in just a moment. 107 yards for the Eskimos, 91 for the Bombers. Three turnovers each, and that was the halftime score. Bombers led 11-8. The Eskimos quickly come out in the third quarter, recover the kickoff, and put it in the end zone to go ahead 15 to 11. Now, another kickoff by the Eskimos. This time it's handled properly. Glenn Steele on the return. And Glenn, Craig Schaefer wraps him up as he crosses the 35 and falls forward to about the 38-yard line. A 20-yard return by Glenn Steele, and he made sure that that ball wasn't going to come loose that time. So the bomber offense out there now for the first time here in the second half. Actually, the ball closer to the 39-yard line, first and 10. Tom Clements had a touchdown pass in the opening half. James Murphy. One interception against Tom Clements as the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage is picked off by James Zachary. Big hole up the middle for Willard Reeves and the CFL Western Bay picks up first down yardage. Lou Delorier and Craig Schaefer team up to bring him down after a gain of 11 out to the 50. Really, that draw is the only play that has been effective along the ground for Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In the second quarter, Reeves picked up 10 yards on the same play. But essentially, the Eskimo defense has been shut down the Winnipeg offense almost entirely. There's the 10 at the 51. Again, it's Willard Reeves up the middle. He's over there to bring him down, along with Danny Bass, number 30. And the pickup is five. Second down for Winnipeg as they move into Edmonton territory. Danny Bass making first contact here, number 30. Winnipeg starting to try and establish a running game, which we felt would be their plan in the first half. They did not do so at all. Again, it's Willard Reeves. Big hole. First down, Winnipeg. Boy, he almost broke that one. James Bell got his feet out from under him, or he may have gone all the way. All of a sudden, three straight running plays by Willard Reeves. I asked Willard if he was having any trouble with his foot putting out on that field, and he said, no, not a bit. And he's showing you he isn't. First down, Bombers from the Eskimo 44. Fakes the draw to Willard Reeves. Clements into the middle to Jerome Merton. Ends off one man is wrapped up by Ron Howard. The gain will be about eight or nine yards. His first catch of the afternoon, Jerome Erdman. Actually, they spot the ball now at the Edmonton 37, so the gain. Howard Seven playing yards. his first game for the Eskimos, or, or starting his first game, I should say, makes a stop on the play. Tennessee Second. State picked up as a free agent. Second down and three. For Kehoe, a little too far. Delorier providing the coverage. Third down, Winnipeg. Trevor Kenner will be trying a field goal. About 44 yards away. Trevor Kenner has had a CFL point scoring record this year with 198. Named to the Western Division All Star team. It is getting dark here at Winnipeg Stadium. Bob Cameron to hold, 44-yard field goal attempt. It's got the distance. It is good. And we have a one-point ball game. The Eskimos 15, the Bombers 14. We'll be back in just a moment. Big stadium, the Eskimos leading the Bombers 15-14 with 11-15 remaining in the third quarter. The Eskimos first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. 
Flags down at the line of scrimmage. Larry Cowan gets outside across the 40, out to near the 43-yard line for a gain of eight yards. Moten in on the tackle, along with Ken Haley and Roy Bennett. Injured Blue Bomber John Sturdivant, number 57, who is just back into the lineup for Winnipeg after missing two games due to an ankle injury. against the Bombers offside so it'll be first down over again five yards to go from the 40 yard line. Brent Rochette number 78 will have to come into the ball game for Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Sturdivant looks to be obviously in a amount of pain. It appears to be his right leg as he goes down. You see Jack Parker on the sideline. Game of mistakes certainly is an appropriate comment today. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers giving up their first touchdown on a block punt and then fumbling the opening kickoff of this second half at their own seven yard line. Bombers have turned the ball over four times. The Eskimos have given it back three times. Patterson checks with acting head coach Fred Wick. Bill, I don't know how you feel, but I think it's about 20 or 30 below zero. <laughs> it feels up here. It's chilly. I wonder if sure. the CFL were considering having all playoff games in BC Place. <laughs> Frank, there's one thing, though. You being an offensive lineman, now you played here when it was really cold. I'm looking at Nick Bastia walking around. He's got his sleeves rolled up as far as he can get them, as though he doesn't even notice it's cold. Are all offensive linemen like that? Uh, you, you'll notice, Bill, that Chris Walby, uh, also an offensive lineman, is exactly the same. <laughs> I think they're a little more hardy than we were or something. I'm not sure. Well, you can throw in linebackers, too. You remember, Frank, before the game, we saw Danny Bass walking around only in his undershirt. Well, we all know the, what linebackers are like, though, Al. <laughs> it's first and five for the Eskimos. The ball at their own 40-yard line. Milson Jones takes the handoff and gets out to about the 43. And James West gets in on the tackle. It'll be second down and a couple for the Eskimos. Just a basic handoff trying to go at the newcomer Brent Rochette in the lineup for his first play defensively and he's knocked right back by big Bill Stevenson 62 will be second in about a yard and a half. He got to the 45 yard line. He'll be short of the first down. See where they spot the football. It's just shy of the 45. It'll be third and a little bit. But the length of the football. Oh, no, it is a first down. The first down. <laughs> Mike Robinson, number 31, got in on the tackle, but Jones. Had enough momentum to carry him to the 45 yard line and just picked up enough yardage for the first down. But Damon Allen, the Eskimo offense, with another series to work with here. They lead by one point here in the third quarter. <laughs> Allen looking for Brian Kelly, who pushed off Roy Bennett. Bennett's looking for an interference call. There are no flags down. It'll be second and ten. <laughs> John Sturdivant, who is back in action for this game after missing some play because of a badly sprained right ankle, has re-injured the ankle. Now they're taking the tape off just to see how bad it is, but when the doctor was touching it, Sturdivant was in obvious pain. It has hurt him greatly. I'd be surprised if he got back in the game. So Sturdivant out. Brent was set number 78, has moved in at left defensive end. Damon Allen with protection once. Chris Woods. And Chris Woods hobbling downfield. He is not 100% healthy coming into this ball game, and a very noticeable that time. He just could not come up with any kind of speed at all. And there was no chance of that completion, Dale. But it did surprise me a bit that David Shaw, the defender on the play, had his hand on Chris Woods' back all the way down the field. Might have been called for interference. So it brings up third and ten, and Tom Dixon is in the punt. Steele and Kevin Miller's back to the field. 
look at this kick from the end zone camera, and it is a good one. Coming down to Glenn Steele inside his own 25-yard line. Steele brings it back to the 35. A good run back by the rookie out of UBC. A 12-yard return, 42-yard kickoff. One-point lead for Eskimos, and we'll be back in a moment. Potters, and right now the Bombers have the ball. They trail by one point. First down at their own 35-yard line. Clemens to Sean Kehoe. Kehoe puts the ball at the 43-yard line for a pickup of eight yards on the play. James Zachary got in on the tackle, helped out by Craig Schaefer. Second down and two. The Bombers quickly over the ball again. About the benefit of a huddle. Trying to shake up the Eskimo defense a little bit. Quickly calling plays and giving to Willard Reeves in the first down as he gets out to the 47-yard line. Interesting to see if they do give the ball to Reeves a few times again on that last possession. They were very effective running the football and went away from it. Stu Hill and Danny Bass got in on the last tackle against Reeves. Bombers have picked up three first downs here in the third quarter, all of them by rushing. Clemens. Tom Kehoe slipped right through his hands, and if Craig Schaefer didn't have his eye fastened on the receiver, he may have come up with an interception. Second down and ten. I really don't understand why they don't try to run that football down a little more. The last time they gave the ball to Reeves, in the last possession, he gained 11, and then 6, and then 12, and they were moving right down the field. Second down and 10. Blasky going high in the air. Incomplete. Bounced around there a little bit. The Eskimos are furious. They Ron Howard. Call. Is suggesting that Joe Poplowski interfere with him, and I agree with him. Joe was all over him. He got away with it. Jeff Boyd almost came up with the ball. But it's third down for the Bombers. We have a one-point football game with the Eskimos leading the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 15-14. Drives the punt returners back to their own 15-yard line. This is Jeff Treplin on the return. And Pat Kantner colors him at the 25-yard line. Vernon Paul was also there. That punt 45 yards in return of seven. This is a nice change for the Eskimos. The last two years, they've come in here for semifinal action, and they got blown up 55-20 last year and 49-22 the year before. And right now, here in the third quarter, they lead 15-14. Dale, since the sun has gone down, it has got noticeably colder, and the field is getting a little more slick. Brian Kelly, I noticed, has changed to broomball shoes to see if he can get a little more traction. Just about the entire Eskimo offense now appears to be wearing the broomball type of shoes. As it's first down for the Eskimo girl, 25-yard line. Damon Allen just dumps it off to Larry Cowan at the 30 for a pickup of five yards. Dale, the same thing is happening on the Winnipeg bench as is happening on the Edmonton bench. They're all making the change. Those who did not have broomball shoes are now putting them on because the field is getting much harder as it gets colder. Larry Cowan with his first catch of the ball game picks up five yards. It's second and five for the Eskimos at the 30. Steve Howlett. Is now a wide receiver. Brian Fryer into the ball game as an inside receiver because Chris Woods is out of the ball game. Damon Allen with it. Damon Allen gets first down. Looks like it. 35 yard line, very close. Allen's done an excellent job of faking the football and taking off with it or buying himself a little extra time to throw it. Once again, a good fake by the young quarterback, and he does move the arch stick. Up to the 35-yard line, five minutes remaining now in this third quarter. The Eskimos have picked up two first downs here in the third quarter, both by rushing. Yeah. 
Smith. Dan Mikowas. Making the tackle. Second down and nine. The winner of this ball game goes to Vancouver next Sunday for the Western Division Final. And of course, in the East, it'll be Montreal at Hamilton next Sunday. And that'll be seen on the full CTV network. Second down and nine. Alan Lux fires to Brian Fryer. It's a first down for the Eskimos out at the 48 yard line. 12 yard pickup. That's Fryer's first catch of the ball game. Just coming in here in the third quarter after Chris Woods was forced out of action. A recurring injury that he's had. Brian Kelly is the leading receiver for the Eskimos today. He's caught two passes for 52 yards. Not a big offensive display. It sure isn't. First down Eskimos from their own 48. Farmers sending a lot of people. Larry Cowan trying to turn the corner. He swept the ball, came loose. Still on the ground. But they ruled the play dead near the 50-yard line for a gain of a couple by Larry Cowan. Apparently the fumble caused when Cowan went down. He slipped more than he got hit, actually. They give him a gain of three. It's second and seven from the 51 and a half. Pass away. Goes incomplete. Ryan Kelly over there along with the coverage of Roy Bennett. And it's third down, and the Eskimos will have to punt it away. Now Winnipeg fans getting a little bit impatient with their troops now. Trying to cheer on the defense and take that football away, which they appear to have done. Well, Frank, for the people that thought this was going to be a blowout, and there were a lot of them because of the Appleton injuries, it has been a surprise thus far. And certainly a disappointment for these Winnipeg fans. That's why they're getting so restless. Off the side of Dixon's foot. Kevin Nealis dives on the football and looks like he got a no yards call against the Eskimos at about the 38 yard line. A 25 yard punt that time by Tom Dixon. Want to remind you of all the Grey Cup action coming your way on CTV Sunday, November 24th, live from the Big O in Montreal. The pregame show starting at 12 noon Eastern Time for an hour and a half, and then the game itself starting at 1:30 Eastern Time. Grey Cup action live on CTV. Well, big break for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with that no yards call. They will scrimmage the ball at their own 49-yard line, and here come the Winnipeg fans. All 30,000 of them here this afternoon. Starting to get into it. They want their offense to put some points on the board. The Bombers trailing 15-14 with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First down Winnipeg from their own 49-yard line. Great for Texan. Jeff Boyd, the intended receiver. There is a penalty marker down. Are they ruling out a completed pass on a fumble? Yes, they are. Well, the Edmonton offense is coming out on the field. They think they've got the ball. I never thought Boyd even had the ball. Another good look at it from the end zone. Boyd goes up. Well, maybe he did have it. Holding against the Eskimos. That penalty flag came down before the pass was completed to Boyd. So the Bombers will retain possession of the football and actually have another first down in Edmonton territory. James Bell holding on James Murphy. Well, not much question <laughs> that the infraction did occur. First down for Winnipeg there at the Eskimo 51 yard line now.
give is to Willard Reeves. Reeves is stopped by Stuart Hill. Craig Schaefer. And now we have Bell swinging. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, I'm sorry. Boy, they're still going at it. Bill Stevenson is now into it. I mean, the Eskimos, Bill Stevenson, number 62, is into it. Not our Bill. No, not your Bill. <laughs> <laughs> we had tempers flaring right on the opening play of this ball game, but this has been the biggest outbreak. Looks like Chris Walby initially big number 63. Blocking against Bass, all of a sudden Jackson tried Ooh. to tackle him. Chris Robley came up with his left foot against Jackson. And that brought some of the Eskimo offensive players onto the field. Happening, of course, right in front of the Eskimo bench. The Eskimo bench are talking about a kicking incident. Yep. I didn't see it, guys. Yeah, it was Chris Walby who kicked Mark Jackson. Jackson, for some reason, tried to tackle the big <laughs> offensive tackle. And Walby, no question, trying to get rid of him with a, a kick on it. I think we're going to get another back. look at it here. Or well, whatever, the gain is going to stand. There are no penalties. It'll be second and about six. see it. Oh, a good catch. The defensive back, Darrell Hall, went for the knockdown, and he missed it, and Murphy, showing great concentration, makes the catch for a first down. 13-yard gain. Not really a complicated pattern. He tries to drive Darrell Hall back and breaks to the outside, comes back for the football, and Hall just misjudged his move to knock it down. A first down at the Eskimo 34-yard line. We're down to the final minute of the third quarter. Hey, so Farmers first and 10 at the Eskimo 34-yard line. The Eskimos lead it 15-14. Going for Boyd. He's got it. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Stuart Hill's got it for the Eskimos at the 10-yard line. The fifth turnover of the ball game by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and it snuffs out the scoring drive at the 10-yard line. Stuart Hill Wow, Winnipeg just continues to self-destruct, giving away the football every time it looks like they're going to put something together. Just popped up in the air, and Stuart Hill was in the right place at the right time. So it's first down for the Eskimos. The ball at their own 15-yard line. 42 seconds left in the third quarter. up the middle as four yards close well he drops the football oh, no. another fumble here in the bottom <laughs> Sam Mickelwater gets it right back to Winnipeg this has been a crazy football game well you know you can't discount the fact that there's awfully cold hands out there right now this temperature is continually dropped since halftime. I think, as Bill Stevenson said, I think it's at least 10 degrees colder than it was in the first half. Well, now it's first and 10 bombers at the Eskimo 16 yard line. Time for one more play here in the third quarter. Clemens would love to put it in the end zone and get the lead back for the bombers before the third quarter ends. Clemens just got rid of the ball. Time touchdown, Murphy. Greg Schaefer with a little bit late. 
Wade is getting to Clements, and Murphy makes a fine catch for his second touchdown of the ball game. And the Bombers are back in front. Just a great throw by Tommy Clements under extreme pressure as he rolled out to the right side and hits Murphy for his second touchdown of the ball game. The final play of the third quarter, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers go ahead of the Edmonton Eskimos. 21-15. We'll be back for the final 15 minutes in just a moment. Turned by Chris Skinner, and he brings it back across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Watch again as Tom Clements hits James Murphy for his second touchdown of the afternoon. A great pressure by Schaefer coming through there from his linebacking spot, but just an excellent throw by Tommy Clements. First down now for the Eskimos at their own 36-yard line. And the ball is being dropped by almost everybody here this afternoon. Dan Eskimos, the ball at their own 36-yard line. Larry Cowan takes the pitch from Damon Allen, tripped up by Tyrone Jones as he tried to turn the corner. Now a penalty flag comes down. Piling on against the Bombers. Well, our view was blocked. As Jones went down, didn't see who the infraction was against, but a very unhappy crowd here as the call goes against the hometown bombers. So that moves it to the Eskimo 52 yard line. Here's another look at it. Tyrone Jones trips him up. And somebody coming in late. Stan Mikawa. Well, that didn't look like all that severe a hit either. Penalty marker down. The Eskimo offensive tackle moved too early. I think it was Nick Potgate. Pass goes incomplete. Chevrolet three-quarter statistics. Nine turnovers. Five of them by the Bombers. But the important stat right now, as far as Winnipeg is concerned, is that scoreboard. They lead it 21 to 15. Don't go away. This ball game is far from over the way turnovers have been such an integral part of this ball game. We're in the fourth quarter. Very early in the fourth quarter. The winner this afternoon goes against the BC Lions a week from today in Vancouver. It's second down and ten. Wide open in the middle is Wilson Jones. First down Eskimos. Jones gets inside the Winnipeg 45-yard line. Gary Moten was there to trip him up, and we have an injured bomber on the play. A gain of 12 yards for Milson Jones, the former Winnipeg Blue Bomber. The amazing part of this game has been the fact that despite a frozen field, the extreme cool temperatures, let's call them cold, which they are, and the fact that uh, it's a hard-hitting game is that we've had so few injuries. And uh, that's fortunate, of course, but we really have had very few, fewer than normal, especially for the temperatures that we have for this game. It must be at least 15, maybe more than that right now. That is minus 15. I was just informed by our producer, Hugh Dunville, that it officially is minus 11 Celsius at this time. Minus well, 11. I think right? feels a lot closer, though. <laughs> <laughs> feels like minus 50. Down here at the bench, I think Bill will attest that it's like covering the Indianapolis 500 as we watch that replay. Uh, the last series of plays, Damon Allen came off. They changed his sweater, fixed his equipment, taped up his foot. He took a phone call, then they fired him back on the track. <laughs> Gave him a little oil job first, eh? College football action from yesterday in Canada. The Wilford Warriors, Cordial winning in overtime. Carlton beating Bishop by 20. Big win for Alberta over UBC. Manitoba. 49-8 over the University of Saskatchewan Huskies. And again, the Saskatoon Hilltops won the Canadian Junior Football Final yesterday with a victory of the Ottawa Sooners. Congratulations to Kevin Scott and his entire staff and the Hilltop organization. First down for the Eskimos. Chris Skinner almost breaks it. To the 30-yard line, he's got a first down. Gary Moten made the tackle, 15-yard gain. 
his first carry of the ball game. Tyrone Jones is very slow in getting up. Well, Ty Jones, I think, was as much disappointed as he was hurt because he had a shot at stopping that play in the backfield and just simply missed the tackle. That is the longest run of the game so far from scrimmage, 15 yards. Chris Skinner, first down, Eskimo, just inside the Bomber 30-yard line. Skinner again, huge hole up the middle. To the 15-yard line, he's got another 15-yard gain. Damon Allen is flattened by James West. He took a terrible shot, you know, after that. Said, I hope we got that in replay. A little slow in getting up, but he is back on his feet. West 58 coming in from his linebacker in spot. You do not see it there, but he put a, a quite a lick on Damon Allen. First down for the Eskimos at Winnipeg's 15-yard line. Big drive here by the Eskimos. For Skinner again, Tony Norman. Played off the block and wrapped up Skinner after a gain of maybe one or two yards. One yard gain. Second down and nine. Twelve minutes remain now. Edmonton Eskimos playing a whale of a ball game here in Winnipeg this afternoon. David Allen calls his own number. He slipped as he got inside the 10-yard line and rolls to about the seven. Scott Flago was there to pin him. He'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Interesting call right here. The Eskimos trail by six. It's going to be third and a good three yards. They're going to go for it. They're not going to go for the field goal. They don't, Frank, they don't call him the Mississippi Gambler for nothing. 11-24 <laughs> left in the fourth quarter. Third down and three. The Eskimos at the Bomber eight-yard line. Full house backfield. They're going to throw it. Get to Milton Jones. He did not make it. Big play defensively. So the Bonner defense comes up big and stops the Eskimos at the seven yard line. Winnipeg leads at 21 15. And we'll be back in just a moment. Damon Allen hands off to Milson Jones, and he has stopped after he gained just one yard for the second time today. The Bombers have stopped the Eskimos on a third short yardage situation. And the Bomber offense takes over at their own seven-yard line. Winnipeg protecting a six-point lead. Under 11 minutes remaining in the ball game. We have a flag down. Clemens throwing for Boyd way over his head. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Offside, Offside against Edmonton. Boy. What about the, uh, the decision to go for it Jack Parker made? I agree. Uh, I agree 100%, Dale, because a field goal just is still you're a field goal down. Okay, so you've got to score twice or a major. So you might as well go for the major right there. Plus the fact that his offense was moving the ball extremely effectively. Well, that's why I was thinking maybe he should go for the field goal. They were moving it well, and then you tie. There's always the possibility of going into overtime. If you can get two field goals. But who are we to say, right? Exactly. That's what he gets paid for. Yep. <laughs> and off to Reeves. Gets to the 15-yard line. It was first and five from the 12. Mandarich making the tackle. It'll be second down in a couple. Sorry, I was just going to give you a trivia question. These two teams met last year in the semifinals, we all know. And then that time, they had to go in with their backup quarterback as well. Who were the two quarterbacks for Edmonton last year? Do you remember? Ingram and Evans, I believe. That's absolutely right. Johnny Evans, who had gone to Edmonton from Montreal as a punter, not even as a quarterback. Second and 
and two. Willard Reeves gets to the 17 yard line. Oh, that's going to be close. Going to have a measurement here. Nine fifty six now remaining in this ball game and in this season for one of these two teams. Let's get the measurement here. See whether or not Willard Reeves did pick up the first down and he has got it. First and ten for the Bombers. Ball at their own 17 and a half yard line. And following this ball game. The Carling O'Keefe Sports Game Stars will be receiving a Royal Canadian Mint one ounce solid gold coin presented by Kodak, makers of the new 8 millimeter Kodavision video system featuring the portable all in one camera and recorder from Kodak. First and 10, Winnipeg. Looking for Jeff Boyd. Well, <laughs> crying foul, but there are no flags now. Both sides <laughs> felt that they were interfered with. Clements going for the bundle on first down from his own 17 yard line. Pat Campen now comes in the ball game with a suggestion, quite possibly not from Fred Glick, but from Cal Murphy, who is operating up here in the press box. Second and 10. Ball at the Winnipeg 17 and a half yard line. He calls the draw play to Willard Reeves. Reeves just powers his way to the 25, 26 yard line. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Good hard running by Willard Reeves. Stu Hill finally put the stop on him. His season end in Winnipeg for the third year in a row. It's 21 15 for the Bombers, and we have 8.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Good. Bob Cameron, Steve Howlett at the 40 yard line. Howlett is brought down at the 46. Peters at the bench, trying to stay warm. It's first down for the Eskimos. Total yardage, only five yards difference. In favor of Winnipeg. Damon Allen on first and 10, looking for Steve Howlett, knocked away by David Shaw. Chris Woods is out of the ball game with an injury, so Howlett is playing as a wide receiver. and. Brian Fire moved into an inside receiving position. You know, Dale, in the last quarter of this ball game or so, the last 10 or 15 minutes, Fred Fleming, our ISO director, has told me that Brian Kelly seems to be setting up Bennett on that corner spot to the outside. Let's see if they go to him. It's second and 10 Eskimos from their own 47 yard line. Wide open for Damon Allen now. And he's to the Winnipeg 50 yard line and a first down. Good job by the rookie quarterback out of Cal State Fullerton. He picks up 13 yards. Go, Probably about 50 degrees colder than Damon Allen's ever played a football yeah, game in his life. So. Mind you, he practiced in bad weather all week long, so he should be a little bit accustomed to it. You alluded to Chris Woods, gentlemen. Uh, he just uh, re-injured that upper thigh muscle pull. He will not go back in today's game. First and ten, Eskimo. Fake to Skinner, and David Allen's in trouble, and he threw the ball away. They're going to give him a sack. It'll be a sack at the 51-yard line. Allen is still down on the ground as well. That's the second time the young quarterback has gotten up extremely slow. Tony Norman brought him down. Right there. In the grass, 714 remains now. And a big play here for both of these ball clubs as it's second and about 19 yards for the Eskimos. Damon Allen is down on one knee. He's gonna have to go out of this ball yeah, game at least for one. We're gonna have Brad Taylor come into the ball game for one play at least. Brad Taylor just hustling out of his jacket and getting his helmet on. Trying to get a quick uh, couple of warm up throws in. Brad Taylor, a rookie quarterback as well. He's out of Arkansas. Allen makes his way to the bench and Brad Taylor will come in. It's second down and about 19 yards to go for the Eskimos. 
The ball back at their own 51 and a half yard line. Well, the University of Arkansas graduate comes in under very difficult circumstances. Second and 19. You can't just hand it off. Taylor flipped the bet and then threw to Larry Cowan, and he's unable to hang on to it. Taylor having trouble with his footing. There's a penalty marker down. Holding against the Eskimos. That will be declined, and they'll be forced to punt the ball away. But let's not forget, holding on to the football has not been an easy that's, thing for anybody this goodness. afternoon. Short punt by Dixon. Bounces to Kevin Nealis. Penalty marker comes down. Nealis is stopped near the 35-yard line. And what James like West is going to be block. called for a block. That jolt had actually uh, was shaken up, and they had to uh, let the cobwebs clear a little bit, but the doctor has checked him out. He says he's okay. It'll be Allen next series. Ball first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. Winnipeg leading 21-15, and we have 6-15 remaining in the ballgame. The give is to Willard Reeves. Well, it looks like a fair up. amount of confusion in that Winnipeg backfield. Zachary and Bass teamed up to bring Reeves down the line of scrimmage. Several people still moving around there when the ball was snapped. Looks like there was some confusion on the formation. Virtually no gain on the play. interception of the season. Oh, that could be a big defensive play by the Eskimos as they get the ball back. Boy, and a very, very poorly thrown football by Tommy Clement. Boy, that no time was open on the play. I remember Tommy just... misread the coverage because Howard was just sitting back there in a zone and the ball almost came right to him. Boy, did the best he could to play defense and was not successful as Howard gets the big turnover for the Eskimos. And Damon Allen is back in at quarterback. He missed just one play. First and 10. Eskimos at the bottom of 42. The give is to Chris Skinner. Very little running room. Farmers had that one defense well all the way. Tommy Norman, Daryl Patterson bring him down. Bale, at this point in the game, with five minutes remaining, I think the Eskimos will go for it on third down, regardless of what yardage is necessary. This makes me think back to that third and three situation. Had they gone for a field goal, they could be in a position now to tie with another field goal. It's intercepted by an all and drop. It's an interception and a fumble. The Bombers have the football. Ken Haley with the interception. Daryl Patterson with the fumble recovery. Ken Haley gets his second interception of the ball game on the very first throw of the ball game by Damon Allen. He picked one off, but none more critical than that one. First down for Winnipeg at their own 35-yard line. About the 39 yard line. A gain of about three, three and a half yards. Just under four minutes for these two ball clubs, one of which ends their season right now. The BC Lions awaiting the winner of this ball game. Western Division Final next Sunday afternoon in Vancouver. It's second down for the Bombers. Clemens with a deep drop and finds the short man Willard Reeves, and it's all he's hauled down by Stu Hill. And again, we have some pushing and shoving going on after the play. 
Short of the first down, the Bombers will have to punt. Well, big defensive effort by the Eskimos. Bob Cameron set to punt the ball away. Jeff Treflin and Steve Howard are the return men. Short kick, Treflin. Penalty marker down. Treflin goes down. He lost yardage. Sean Kehoe making the open field tackle. 26-yard punt. The score is Winnipeg 21 and Edmonton 15. We'll be back right after this. 51 remaining in the ball game. Dale and Allen, the quarterback. First down, Edmonton at their own 25-yard line. Allen throws complete to Marco Sincar for a first down out near the 40-yard line. There was a holding infraction against the Eskimos on that punt return. That's why they had to scrimmage the ball at their own 30-yard line. Sinkar picking up 15 yards. And Huckwalk, another former Blue Bomber, checks into the offensive huddle, replacing Nelson Jones. In the middle for Chris Skinner, he overthrows him. And again, Damon Allen picks himself up. Well, there won't be any question about strategy. The Eskimos have to put it in the end zone. They trail by six. Setting up the screen to Milson Jones, and the pass is too high. It'll be third down. Boy, that was set up extremely well, too. Gary Moulton was the only bomber out there, and there were three blockers formed in front of him. The Eskimos now appear to want to kick it away with 229 remaining. It's third and ten. I'm a little surprised at that. I thought they might go for it right here. Well, they're, they're hoping their defense can do the job for them now. Get the ball back quickly. Tom Dixon set the punt it away on third and ten. Kevin Neelitz on the return from his own 30 Eight yard line gets to the 40, the 41. Well, that field is getting harder and harder. You can see Neil is how he slipped a couple of times while he was waiting for that punt to come down. 221 now. 32 yard punt and a three yard return. Now bombers at their own 40. John Kehoe, the ball carrier, he has a couple of yards. Second down and eight. 21-15 is the score. Two minutes and 17 seconds remaining. The Bombers trying to eat up as much time as possible and get another trip to Vancouver. Third year in a row, these two teams have met in the Western Division semifinal. And this is by far the best of the three. Pass intended for Jeff Floyd. Mark Jackson providing the coverage. It'll be third down, and the Eskimos will get the ball back. Well, fans here would have been stating booing the coverage by Jackson, but it was good defense. Cameron to punt. And it's another good one. He hangs this one up there for Steve Hollett back at his own 25-yard line. And downfield quickly, John Funk and James West. 42-yard punt and only a four-yard return. So the Eskimos, with 1.43 left, get another crack at it. They trail by six. First down from their own 29. With the gun, he stopped the screen to Milton Jones. He needs a block, but he stumbled anyway and just barely got back to the line of scrimmage before contact was made by Tyrone Jones able to get the football away, but Winnipeg reacted extremely well. Minute and a half left. Second down and almost a full 10 yards to go. Allen throws complete. Steve Howlett makes the catch. He steps out of bounds at the Eskimo 47-yard line, but he's got a first down. 1-13 remains. 
18 yard pickup. 18 away from a trip to the Western Division final in Vancouver next Sunday. The Eskimo trying to come back. David Allen, lots of time going for Brian Kelly. It's knocked away. Scott Flagel moved over there to break it up, and Roy Bennett was there providing the coverage as well. It looked like Flagel was going to pick that off, but he and Bennett collided just when the football got there. Here's a good example of the range that Scott Flagel has playing center field back there. Ooh. You no, know, Kelly wasn't open for very long, but it was a really good throw by Allen. Time remaining in the lower right hand corner of your screen. David Allen to Milson Jones. The ball's loose. Well, he fumbled the football. One official is signaling incomplete, the other is signaling complete. They're saying he never had control of the ball. It'll be third down. They'll bring it back to the 47 yard line. Edmonton Eskimo Football Club coming into Winnipeg Stadium against the highly favored Bombers with so many injuries it's hard to recap them all for you and they played them right down to the final minute. Well it reads to the 40 down to the 39 yard line. A gain of eight yards. see the field goal unit for the Bombers to put this one out of reach. Oh, they're going to get a measurement first. No, nope, they're not. It's third down and about half a yard to go. And he is not going to send the field goal unit in. What they may do here, Dale, is just let that clock go right down, take the penalty, and then punt the football away. Eskimos have finally called a timeout. I'm surprised they didn't do that earlier. They certainly wasted valuable Boy, seconds getting ever. around to that. I thought they would have called the timeout as soon as that last play was finished. Bob Cameron is in to punt on third and one. We'll look to try and get another single here and give them a full seven point advantage. The Laurier back in the end zone. And John Bonk is going to be called for no yards, so there will not be a point on the play. But we have four seconds left. Eskimos will get one more chance. We have four seconds left, so time for one more play here for Edmonton. Dunnigan just airs it out for Brian Kelly. It'll be knocked down by Roy Bennett. And for the third year in a row, the Eskimo season ends in Winnipeg, and the Bombers are on their way to Vancouver. The final score, Winnipeg 22, Edmonton 15. And now the Carlingo Team Sports Offensive and Defensive Game Stars and selected by our broadcast crew from Winnipeg. Wide receiver James Murphy is the offensive star. And also from the Bombers, defensive back Ken Haley is the defensive star. Each of today's stars will receive a Royal Canadian Mint one-ounce solid gold coin presented by Kodak, makers of the new 8mm Kodavision portable all-in-one camera and recorder from Kodak. This is the CFL on CFL. 